Welcome back to another video on my channel and a second round of comparisons between the brand new Nikon C9 and the well-established Nikon C7 Mark II. This video is all about the electronic shutter incorporated in both cameras. The Nikon C7 II has a mechanical and an electronic shutter. The Nikon C9 has electronic shutter only. And I've spoken about the electronic shutter of the Nikon C7 Mark II in a previous video and I speculated about the electronic shutter of the Nikon C9 but now we have them both in the studio so we can put them side by side and draw real life conclusions. Let's get started. The experiment I'm going to do is something I've done before on my channel. I will take photos of this fan here and incorporate it in the fan are some LEDs and uh, we will let this run. We'll plug it into the wall, into a power plug and we'll freeze with a fast shutter speed the movement of the blades and uh, then we'll see what happens if we switch here on the Nikon C7 II from mechanical to electronic shutter and how the electronic shutter of the C9 is dealing with that challenge. And that will reveal that the Nikon C9 has a totally different design when it comes to the sensor, a totally different data processing speed than what we have in the C7 II. And all in will confirm what I speculated in previous videos on the brand new camera which has electronic shutter only and no more mechanical shutter which is something we've not seen on many cameras in the past. For the fan blade freezing experiment I will shoot both cameras with exactly the same lens namely the 24 to 70 millimeter f2.8 s lens from the Nikon C system and I will shoot them widest open at f2.8 and with exactly the same parameters. Let's start the experiment with these fan blades with the Nikon C7 II first and I know I've shown this before in one of my other videos, but for the sake of completeness, let's quickly repeat the argument to get the shots which we can compare side by side with the Nikon C9. So what you see here is the C7 II mounted on tripod. The lens is at 70 millimeter focal length. So almost a macro type environment here, what you see. I have decided on shutter to go for mechanical shutter first, which you see here, but with electronic front curtain, I've also gone here for a five second self timer, widest open aperture f2.8. I'm in fully manual mode at one over 100 seconds exposure. And for ISO, I decided to go for auto. And currently the camera is indicating given the light and the shutter speed and the aperture we have for an ISO of 125. And of course, the faster I will choose my shutter speed, the more the ISO value will climb up. So let's take a first shot here of that fan, not in motion. Count down five seconds. All right, here we go for the first shot. Let's go into play. Let's zoom this in. Let's see if this is nice and sharp. Looks good. Very nice. Okay, so far so good. Now let's make the shutter speed much faster. So let's go here to Okay, here's end of story. That's very likely because I have electronic front curtain. Let me quickly change that now and let's go into shutter type. Let's go to mechanical shutter and now I can go much faster. Let's go to the maximum we get here, one over 8,000 seconds. And uh, let's take the shot when the fan blades are in motion. So I switch on the fan now, we will see the LEDs. And uh, I think that looks quite nice. I should later take a longer exposure maybe and uh, see how the light traits look in that image, just for fun. All right, we do one over 8,000 seconds. We have now an ISO value of 8,000 here. As I said before, ISO goes up if shutter speed gets faster and we take the shot. Self timer, shot is taken. Let's have a look. Very nice. So I think we achieved what we wanted. The fan blades are frozen here. The image is crisp and sharp and uh, we achieved our goal. Now we do the same with electronic shutter. And that is what I showed before in one of the videos will knock you out of your shoes because it looks so artistic. <laughs> so let's go here to silent photography. I think we have to somewhere down here. Let's scroll quickly. Here we go, silent photography. Let's go to on and let's take the same shot as what we did before with fully mechanical shutter. 
because we are on silent photography, you don't hear the noise of the self timer, but the image now looks totally splintered. And we'll see this later in uh, the representation when I show the images side by side with the Nikon C9. But that's the result I had before. It looks quite artistic, I think, in the way this is disassembling the fan. And that is due to a slow readout time of the processor and in general, a slow data processing speed. If you work with a CMOS sensor and a line by line readout of that sensor under a rolling shutter. So we come back to this in the course of the video. Let's also just for fun, take a bit of a nonsense image here. I want to go for a two second exposure. I close the aperture as far as possible and stop it down to F22. The ISO value is already at its lowest available value 64. And let's in this way collect some nice light trails. So let's see how this looks like. We should actually very likely go back to mechanical shutter here. So let's go into the menu. Let's get silent photography off and let's take a nice light trail picture here just for fun. This will be overexposed two seconds, even if a stop down aperture to F22. Let's have a look how it looks like. Quite nice. You see the LEDs as circles here. And I think that's a nice picture. And since I stopped down the aperture, you also see my ugly wall here close to the door in the studio. Repeating the same experiment with the Nikon C9, we have exactly the same parameters here. Everything is exactly the same. So let's take a first frame here. And by the way, you see how consistent the cameras are. So here I still have an auto ISO, but with the parameters before on the C7 II, we saw one over 100 seconds and widest open f 2.8, the camera decides for 125 of ISO. That's exactly the same here on the C9. So let's take the shot with a self timer of five seconds. So let's have a look at the picture, how the picture looks like. Let's zoom in here. That is nice, crisp and sharp, looks very good. I've prepared the Nikon C9 for the next round. So I've already activated the fan here. So the fan blades are moving. We have one over 8,000 seconds, widest open f 2.8. And I manually took the same ISO as what we had on the C7 II. So let's take the shot with a self timer and let's see what we get. So let's have a look here and let's go into play. And then we see the fan is nice and also looks good. I think this is an okay image. So I can live with that. Let's now do the last shot, which were the light trails and let's go here to two seconds. So here we go. Two seconds. Let's get the aperture stop down to F22. And of course, let's get the ISO value adjusted. Actually, we can let the camera do the job. Let's go into auto ISO. So 64 as we had it on the C7 II. So let's take that shot here and then we are done with our shooting. Self timer. Let's see how this plays out. Two second exposure taking, I guess then we will have noise reduction. Yes. And here we go. Let's go into play. And here we have the same circles from the LEDs as what we saw before on the C7 II. So I think it's time now to look into the images, put them side by side on the MacBook. I've now imported the images we just took in that live demonstration into Lightroom. On the left hand side, I have the C7 II and on the right hand side, I have the C9. And just from looking at the two images, let's spend a moment on that. These images do not look exactly the same, although they have about the same shooting parameters. And when I say about this, we have one over 100 seconds on both shots, widest open f 2.8 and ISO 125 on the C7 II on the left hand side. But on the right hand side, because I was in auto mode and probably the camera moved a bit where the light was metered, it decided last minute for an ISO of 110. So in terms of brightness, I think it can be explained maybe that the right hand side is a bit less bright than the left hand side, but also in the coloring, you see a bit of a difference here in these images. And I didn't expect these images to come out exactly the same because the C9 has a newly developed stack BSI CMOS sensor and BSI stands for backside illuminated. So we have to accept 
tiny little nuances and differences here. But in general, that's the shots we wanted. So on the left hand side, we have the mechanical shutter on the C7 II. On the right hand side, we have the electronic shutter, but this is the less exciting part because the fan blades were not moving in the first scene. Here we come now to the more exciting part of the experiment. On the left hand side, we have again the C7 II. On the right hand side, the C9. And you see here that the fan blades were moving with high speed and the C9 achieved with its electronic shutter the same freezing of the fan blades as the Nikon C7 did with its mechanical shutter. The shooting parameters are exactly the same as you saw in the live experiment. 1 over 8000 seconds at f2.8 and an ISO of 8000. And that is confirmation or proof of evidence that the C9 in its newly developed sensor is actually quick enough in terms of readout time and then in combination with the CPU and the data processing speed to deliver the same results as a high speed mechanical shutter as we have it on the C7 II and that's good news. Here you have on the right hand side again the electronic shutter image of moving fan blades with high speed from the Nikon C9 and on the left hand side you have the image which you saw before in the live demonstration which came out of the shooting scene when I switched on the Nikon C7 II from mechanical shutter to electronic shutter. The shooting parameters of both images are about the same. It seems that last second the Nikon C7 II decided for an ISO of 7200 in contrast to 8000 on the Nikon C9. But in general these images are comparable and you see on the left hand side on the electronic shutter of the C7 II an effect which is called the rolling shutter effect which I explained in detail in my previously mentioned videos and that typically happens if the readout time of a CMOS sensor with a rolling electronic shutter is not quick enough and then the fast moving subjects get completely splintered and do not appear as they should and the fan blades and the movement of the fan blades cannot be frozen in the same way as you see it on this high speed electronic shutter on the Nikon C9 on the right hand side. And I think that is an interesting image as I said before on the left hand side that almost looks a bit artistic but is clearly not the intention you had when you tried to freeze fast moving objects in front of the camera. Last but not least let's have a quick look at the two light trail images on the left hand side again the C7 II on the right hand side the C9 both with exactly the same parameters, two seconds, f22, so stop down to the maximum on a 24 to 70 millimeter Nikon C lens and an ISO of 64. Zooming in for a moment looks quite nice. I actually like it. I think these light trails look good, despite the fact that my studio wall background here is nothing to write home about. Whenever you think about a CMOS sensor, think about an illustration like the one you see here on display and an electronic shutter which is a rolling shutter on a CMOS sensor reads out the sensor line by line and if that process doesn't happen quickly enough then the rolling shutter effect kicks in with these distortions or the total splintering of the fan blades as we saw it in the sample image a moment ago. I hope you liked that video and it was useful for you to follow my little experiment here. You still see here the nice light trails coming from the fan. I think that is a very reliable experiment to test out if the sensor readout time and data processing speed of a sensor is quick enough so that you can really rely on the electronic shutter even in case of fast moving subjects. And here clearly it turned out that the Nikon C7 II cannot be used for electronic shutter if you have a situation where objects are moving fast. Whereas on the C9 you can safely use the electronic shutter because there is no alternative, no mechanical shutter built in but it's also delivering and is actually able based on its readout time which is very fast and based on its data processing speed to actually freeze a fan if uh, you have here a fast moving subject like these blades on my LED fan. If you liked that video don't forget to drop me a thumbs up. Stay tuned on my channel there's always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and of course peace out.